it's quite amazing you can get all that energy out of this small ball. And the cost of a ball like that, when it's mined out of the ground, is roughly $100. So if you live for 100 years, it's like $1 per year for the raw material to produce all the green energy you would need for your entire life. That is, that is a big opportunity, and this is what Copenhagen Atomics is working on, developing that technology. A technology that could potentially provide electricity for 1,500 years. Using a metal that is more abundant than uranium and less radioactive than coal. Yes, you heard that right. We are talking about thorium and how a company called Copenhagen Atomics is building a new type of reactor that can burn nuclear waste and produce clean and cheap energy. Well, stick around and find out how this could change everything in 2024. As you probably know, the world is facing a huge challenge when it comes to energy. We need more and more electricity to power our homes, industries, and transportation, but we also need to reduce our carbon emissions and environmental impact. Fossil fuels, such as coal, oil, and gas, are still the dominant sources of energy, but they are finite, polluting, and contribute to global warming. Renewable energy, such as solar, wind, and hydro, are cleaner and greener, but they are intermittent, unreliable, and depend on weather conditions. Nuclear energy, on the other hand, is reliable, constant, and carbon-free. But it also has some drawbacks, such as safety, security, and waste management. Nuclear energy is based on the principle of fission, which is the splitting of atomic nuclei to release energy. The most common fuel for fission is uranium-235 a rare and expensive isotope of uranium that can only be found in about 0.7% of natural uranium. To make it usable, uranium has to go through a process called enrichment, which increases the concentration of uranium-235. Enriched uranium is then shaped into fuel rods and placed inside a reactor, where it undergoes a controlled chain reaction that generates heat and electricity. However, not all the uranium-235 is consumed in the reaction. Some of it is converted into other elements, called fission products, which are highly radioactive and have to be stored safely for thousands of years. Some of it is also transformed into heavier elements, called actinides, which can be used as fuel for other types of reactors, but also pose a risk of proliferation and terrorism. Nuclear waste is one of the biggest problems of nuclear energy. According to the International Atomic Energy Agency, there are about 250,000 tons of spent nuclear fuel in the world, and this number is expected to grow by 2% every year. Spent nuclear fuel contains about 95% of unused uranium, 3% of fission products, and 1% of actinides. The fission products are the most radioactive and dangerous, but they decay relatively fast, losing half of their radioactivity in about 30 years. So, is there a way to solve the nuclear waste problem and make nuclear energy safer, cheaper, and more sustainable? Well, this is where thorium comes in. Thorium is another element that can be used for fission, but with some remarkable advantages over uranium. Thorium is more abundant, more efficient, and less radioactive than uranium. And it can also burn up the actinides from spent nuclear fuel, reducing the amount and the toxicity of nuclear waste. How is this possible? Well, to find out, we need to take a closer look at the thorium fuel cycle and how it differs from the uranium fuel cycle. The thorium fuel cycle. Thorium is a chemical element with the symbol and the atomic number 90. It is a silvery white metal that is slightly radioactive, but much less than uranium. Thorium is also more abundant than uranium, as it makes up about 0.6% of the Earth's crust, compared to 0.2% for uranium. This means that there is enough thorium in the world to provide electricity for 1,500 years, even if we use it at the same rate as we use uranium today. Thorium is mostly found in a mineral called monazite, which also contains rare earth elements, such as lanthanum, cerium, and neodymium. These elements are used for making magnets, batteries, and electronics, and they are in high demand for the green energy transition. Therefore, 
Extracting thorium from monazite would also provide a valuable source of rare earth elements, which are currently dominated by China. But how can thorium be used for fission? Well, unlike uranium-235, thorium-232 is not fissile, which means that it cannot sustain a chain reaction by itself. Thorium-232 is fertile, which means that it can be converted into a fissile material by absorbing a neutron. This is what happens in the thorium fuel cycle, which is a series of nuclear reactions that involve thorium and uranium. The thorium fuel cycle starts with thorium-232, which absorbs a neutron and becomes thorium-233. Thorium-233 then decays into protactinium-233, which decays into uranium-233. Uranium-233 is the fissile material that can be used for fission, just like uranium-235. Uranium-233 can then be mixed with more thorium-232 and placed inside a reactor, where it undergoes a controlled chain reaction that generates heat and electricity. The reactor also produces more uranium-233 from the thorium-232, creating a self-sustaining cycle that can last for decades without refueling. The reactor also produces some fission products and some actinides, but much less than a conventional uranium reactor. The fission products can be separated from the fuel and stored safely for a few hundred years until they become harmless. The actinides can be either recycled back into the reactor, where they are burned up, or transmuted into other elements, such as molybdenum-99, which is used for medical imaging. The thorium fuel cycle has many advantages over the uranium fuel cycle. It is more efficient, as it uses almost all of the thorium, compared to only 0.7% of the uranium. It is safer, as it does not require enrichment, which reduces the risk of proliferation and terrorism. It is cleaner, as it produces less waste, which is less radioactive and easier to manage. And it is cheaper, as it uses a cheaper and more abundant fuel, and requires less infrastructure and maintenance. Copenhagen Atomics is a Danish company that was founded in 2014 by a group of engineers, entrepreneurs, and nuclear enthusiasts. Their mission is to develop and commercialize a new type of reactor that can use thorium and burn nuclear waste, while being safe, modular, and scalable. Their vision is to provide clean and affordable energy for everyone and to help solve the climate crisis and the nuclear waste problem. Copenhagen Atomics operates from a modern facility in Copenhagen, where they have a team of about 30 people, including experts in nuclear physics, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, software development, and business development. They also collaborate with several partners and advisors such as the Technical University of Denmark, the European Commission, and the International Atomic Energy Agency. Copenhagen Atomics is working on a game-changing technology that could revolutionize the nuclear industry and the energy sector. This technology is called the Waste Burner, and it is a new type of reactor that can use thorium and burn nuclear waste. The Waste Burner is based on the concept of a molten salt reactor, which is a type of reactor that uses liquid fuel instead of solid fuel. A molten salt reactor is a reactor that uses a mixture of salts, such as lithium fluoride and beryllium fluoride, as both the fuel and the coolant. The salt mixture is heated to a high temperature, about 600 degrees Celsius, and becomes a liquid. The liquid salt flows through a core, where it is bombarded with neutrons and undergoes fission. The fission produces heat, which is transferred to a secondary salt loop, which drives a turbine and generates electricity. The fission also produces more neutrons, which are used to convert thorium-232 into uranium-233, or to burn up the actinides from spent nuclear fuel. The liquid salt then returns to the core, where the cycle continues. A molten salt reactor has many advantages over a conventional reactor. It is safer as it operates at low pressure and has a negative temperature coefficient, which means that if the temperature rises, the reaction slows down. 
It is also designed to have a freeze plug, which is a valve that melts in case of a power failure and drains the liquid salt into a passive cooling tank where it solidifies and stops the reaction. It is cleaner as it produces less waste, which is less radioactive and easier to manage. It is also capable of burning up the actinides from spent nuclear fuel, reducing the amount and the toxicity of nuclear waste. It is cheaper as it uses a cheaper and more abundant fuel and requires less infrastructure and maintenance. It is also modular and scalable as it can be built in small units that can be transported and assembled on site and can be adjusted to different power demands. The waste burner is a specific type of molten salt reactor that is optimized for using thorium and burning nuclear waste. The waste burner is designed to have a power output of 100 megawatts, which is enough to power 100,000 homes. The waste burner is also designed to have a lifetime of 60 years and to operate without refueling for 20 years. The waste burner is also designed to have a high burn-up rate which means that it can consume about 99% of the thorium and 95% of the actinides, leaving behind only 1% of waste, which is mostly fission products. The waste burner is also designed to have a high safety margin, which means that it can withstand extreme events such as earthquakes, floods, and terrorist attacks. The waste burner is not only a reactor, but also a platform for innovation and collaboration. Copenhagen Atomics is developing the waste burner as an open source project, which means that they are sharing their design, data, and code with the public, and inviting feedback and contributions from anyone who is interested. Copenhagen Atomics is also creating a community of supporters, investors, and customers who can participate in the development and deployment of the waste burner. Copenhagen Atomics is also engaging with the regulators, policymakers, and media to educate them about the benefits and challenges of thorium and molten salt reactors and to advocate for a favorable and fair environment for nuclear innovation. Copenhagen Atomics is not only a company, but also a movement. They are not only developing a technology, but also a vision. They are not only building a reactor, but also a future. A future where everyone has access to clean and affordable energy. A future where nuclear waste is not a problem, but a resource. A future where thorium is not a dream, but a reality. In 2024, they plan to complete the construction and the installation of the waste burner reactor and to start the operation and the commissioning of the reactor. As you can see, the waste burner project is progressing well and is on track to achieve its goal of becoming the first commercial thorium and waste burning reactor in the world. However, the project is not without challenges and difficulties, as there are many technical, regulatory, and social issues that need to be addressed and overcome. Copenhagen Atomics is confident that they can overcome these challenges and difficulties, and that they can make the waste burner reactor a success. They believe that the waste burner reactor is not only a technology, but also a solution. A solution for the climate crisis and the nuclear waste problem. A solution for the energy demand and the energy security. A solution for the future of humanity and the planet. In this video, we have learned about the waste burner, a revolutionary reactor that can use thorium and burn nuclear waste while being safe, modular, and scalable. We have also learned about Copenhagen Atomics the visionary team behind the waste burner, and their progress and challenges in making thorium a reality and providing clean and affordable energy for everyone. The waste burner is not only a technology, but also a solution. A solution for the climate crisis and the nuclear waste problem. A solution for the energy demand and the energy security. A solution for the future of humanity and the planet. We hope that you have enjoyed this video and that you have learned something new and interesting. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of our new uploads. Thank you for your attention and your support. We hope to see you again on Future Energy. Until then, stay curious and stay energized. Bye for now.